All right, so let's talk about Gyre. Released a couple months ago. It's October. She was released in, what was it, April? Um, a weapons platform frame centered around synergies with uh, electricity stacks and crit. Uh, comes with decent uh, AoE crowd control. Um, utilizing uh, electricity to control her crit chance. Her abilities have flat crit chance from her passive based on the number of stacks. Uh, but she lacks survivability. Eventually, it gets to the point where Eximus units are going to Eximus unit, um, and it's really hard for her to face tank over a period of several seconds. If she can't CC the enemy, and the enemy is literally going to sit there and look at you, and fire at you, um, you can run into some small troubles. So this video is an attempt to make a non-Helminth Steel Path effective gyre while utilizing the Alternox and the Hespar. Obviously, she's significantly more effective when using more meta weapons, but the, the challenge of this was getting her the Alternox and her preferred melee, the Hespar, uh, to work with her. <clears throat> so let's go over the build. Going to be using Blind Rage, Equilibrium, Augur Reach, Augur Secrets, Augur Message. We are running two Augur mods on the pistol, Rolling Guard, uh, Prime Flow, and Stretch. This is going to be a Shield Gate build. And this is how I found that will at least make her semi-viable in being able to um, stay alive using shield gating. At least give you a panic button. Because one of the issues that Gyre has is unless you are running an obscene amount of casting speed, uh, it's really not possible to... Shield gate with rotor swell, it's way too expensive of an ability. Um, and even with natural talent and what is it, matter eye, it's just not something you want to spam all the time because this is a duration based ability, it's got decent range, discharge range is pretty good, and it also, more importantly, the electric procs from this will trigger electric procs on stuff that the lightning bolt or the bolt that comes out of it proc from so it's actually pretty cool uh coil horizon has a pretty hefty uh cast time on it it's not super bad but the issue is is while a ball is going forward you essentially have to constantly be double tapping on this ability and the energy requirement of this is pretty high for something that needs to be spammable it's definitely not something that the passive energy from cathode grace can give you because if you're trying to shield gate for like two three seconds and get between rolling guards and back away from an enemy <clears throat> you could be looking at spamming 300 energy in short order so our only option without going into like a higher end build where it requires a completed focus tree is to use arc sphere as our shield gate we're going to be increasing our drain from casting using blind rage and there's two alternatives because prime flow everybody can get for those that don't have prime sure footed I have an alternate build. Um, but Arc Sphere has a very quick cast time. You're not stuck in an animation with the ball traveling. Um, and it's free electric proc. So I chose to center this around using one to shield gate with. Because two and three have long cast times. Three, if you have to shield gate with it, um, generally it's on like an Eximus unit. Which isn't going to be effective when it's over or its overguard is up. So you want something that's cheaper 
because if you were to use Coil Horizon on something, you don't need to shield gate if it's effective on it because you've yanked everything into the ball. It's the enemies that come along that aren't affected by Coil Horizon that are the issue. They're just going to stand there and shoot at you. So the Prime Sure Footed build, um, if you can maintain your energy, and this is a very energy hungry build. Arcane Energize, so this is the more expensive build. Blind Rage is maxed. Uh, everything is maxed in this, and you're using uh, five Augur mods and Brief Respite. Just to show what it is, our base shield with the Kang Dragon Key is 131. We need to get to 131 plus 1 to get our Overshield from Shield Gate to Overshield. 266 is 135. So just casting this once will give us instant overs. And you can spam it pretty well. But again, pretty energy hungry build. Every time gives overs. The alternate build that almost doesn't require energize. You have to have the Panzer to make this work. If you don't have Prime Sure Footed on this, it is not a core part of it. Uh, and it is also the way we're going to get our Shield Gate is we were able to reduce Blind Rage down a couple points. We are again going to be using five Augur mods. And to offset the reduction in the efficiency loss and the energy drain that we need in order to get shields back, Coaction Drift is going to go in the other slot. But it is going to make us lose some range. But you're going to be able to make it up by being able to cast a little bit more. Um, you're going to have to be, use uh, Wellspring from Xenurk to keep your energy up. But it's, it's far enough down in terms of like the first focus nodes that you would be getting um, that I would say that this is a reasonable thing to expect people to have because at least you're going to have Energy Pulse, and Wellspring. If you start in the Xenuric node, these, this is one and two you need to get. You might not have Hardened Wellspring. But as long as you have these two, you'll be able to do this. And Rolling Guard is, is a must. So let's talk about the Alternux. Um, if you don't have Primed Bane, that's fine. Obviously, it's going to help your damage significantly. But if you don't have it, you could do uh, like another fire rate and get rid of Vile and maybe do Galvanized Scope if you're waiting on Barrow to come around with this. That would give you decent damage because with this we are going to be modded for Corrosive. So the build just to cover it. Uh, Vital Sense, Galvanized Aptitude, Critical Delay, Hunter Munitions, Malignant Force, 60-60, uh, Galvanized Chamber... Prime Bane of Grenier, and Vile Acceleration. Um, Vile Acceleration is going to be for the first build, where it has the higher drain uh, Blind Rage. The second one, I was able to slot Arcane Acceleration, so I wouldn't use this. That being said, if you, have, if you don't have Arcane Acceleration, by the way, it's a pretty cheap Arcane. Um, it's only 180 definitely worth it and it basically gives you a vial acceleration amount of fire rate without the negative to damage not that it matters that much but it is a nice bonus and but more importantly it frees up a mod slot and you would be able to slot either like more crit um or maybe shred or just whatever you want but this would be a starter build um for somebody who's done arbitrations and the other one is the melee, the uh, Hespar. Sorry, not that build. Um, this is going to be your basic quick attack build. Um, just to talk about it briefly, I was able to Riven out of the Hespar issue with the, the IPS. 
Um, I was able to roll a ribbon for plus slash minus impact and heavy attack efficiency. Status duration, I could take or leave it. Generally, you want to pop something on one or two slash t ticks. But it's more slash damage. Um, so this fixes the IPS distribution, makes it way more slash heavy, and it allows me to spam the heavy attack more. Uh, but the regular build, if you don't have, uh, you should have prime reach. If you don't, slot regular reach. If you don't have prime fury, uh, quickening berserker, if you don't have the smite mod, but you will be doing less damage. But it's a standard quick attack build. Uh, this does allow the slash procs to shine through a bit. Um, what is 55? It's right over 63%. Yeah, 63 and a half. 63.6% slash weighting. <clears throat> and the weapon has enough status chance that it will be procking a status every time you hit something. And then some. Um, so you're going to be getting decent slash weighting. If you want, uh, because of the weighting on this, it's fairly evenly weighted impact slash. This weapon would be decently, uh, do decent raw damage against, uh, corpus and infested, but dot wise, it would do way better because of the high base damage against slash if you once you can get the slashes to proc which is part of the issue issue which is why we're running carnus mandible because the difference between carnus mandible and buzzkill actually isn't that much in this circumstance hold on okay so it was 63.6 Okay, so for slash weighting, it's 63.6 for Carnus Mandible versus running Buzzkill, which gives 66.9, so say 67%. For me, I chose the extra status chance. If, if you want the extra slash uh, with the slight increase in raw damage, there, there is a bit of raw damage. It's an extra 10%. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to. It's your build. Um, but I went with the basic quick attack build. Prime Fury. Obviously, that's a login. Um, quickening would help a ton. Uh, if you don't have Quickening for some reason, Gladiator might Gladiator Vice to help your crit chance out. Um, will allow you to hit oranges easier. Um, and I guess if you don't have... Smite Grenier, you can do that also. Or put the regular Smite Grenier. You probably have that. So let's just revert this. There we go. So let's see the damage real quick. Um, I have decided to do double dexterity. And I'm not sure about the primary. Um, I'm probably going to leave it as double as double dexterity for the time being. Um, just because it's so hard to get the combo up with this. Because uh, the attack speed is kind of slow. But I really wanted the dexterity on the secondary because it's a primer. Um, and we are going to be priming for corrosive heat. Because uh, the primary is going to be doing corrosive. So even though technically you're not priming for something else... Um, to get the immediate 80% armor shred and to RNG the heat proc while I'm priming, I'm valuing the armor shred highly in this because it's going to give me 90% armor shred and because the Alternox deals pure electricity on its primary fire, adding the toxin mod turns it into corrosive and allows me to hit Grenier as hard as possible. Obviously, you would change this if you were doing Corpus, but we're going to be using Grenier because the uh, the Eximus units on Grenier tend to be a really big pain in the ass compared to the other ones. But Reflex Draw, it's a standard Epitaph build. Multi-shot, got the Augur set, uh, Toxin Electric for Corrosive, Anemic Agility just to get the fire rate up. Um, 
And I did a 60-60 of Scorch. Help with the status. It's not super high, 140% on the quick attack. I just need one heat proc to get the armor shred. I'm not trying to heat primer, like heat inherit or anything. And reflex, dr reflex draw just to give some additional holster speed. If you don't like it or you don't feel like you need it, you can get rid of it, obviously. Put something else there. And pistol ammo mutation for ammo. Alright, so we got Exo 190s. We're going to get some kills so we can get the, um, the other stacks. The damage is pretty weak to start with once the stacks get up. So we're getting 6Ks, 9Ks, saw 35, 10K, 28K, 43, 43, 11, 10, 66. The viral from the pet helping out a lot. So for the primary, prime everything up with viral. And you can see the raw damage from the electricity procs. Do okay. It's mostly the AoE stacking, right? It's not really gonna blow stuff up at higher levels but with the amount of crit chance we gain from our three it gives them um, yellows almost immediately So, pretty simple. Um, no big brain math this time, like with Korra. But it's the, the shield gating. One of her issues is how high her shield is. So with everything primered with um, corrosive and heat already, the Alternox actually hits pretty hard, all things considered. Right, so let's take a look at what the uh, damage is. 10Ks. Climbs up to 18. 17. Saw 30. And the slash procs are in the low thousands. Obviously not end game viable, but decent enough for steel path, right? So with the armor shredded and the viral stacks from the pet, 12k, 5k raw damage. So the play style, and I think this is the most annoying part, is the thing with the Alternox. Is the primary fire is pure elemental. That is both a plus and a minus, right? Modded for corrosive, which is super good against Grenier, the ferrite armor. And even with... Um, like, the alloy armor not getting the pl the bonus damage on it you still get the armor shred so it's not a complete loss um but the ips the impact puncture slash is on the alt fire so galvanized aptitude in terms of the alt fire we're basically using it for the status chance 
the, uh, the galvanized aptitude bonus damage does apply to the direct impact of the alternate fire. So it is going to help boost this damage as much as you want to consider that a plus, because there's no crit. There's a decent crit multiplier on it. Uh, but the main thing about it is that it's got heavy status, so when you hit something, it's going to deal a status. Um, and the only interesting thing to really talk about with this is that it actually applies, um, for those of you that have been playing for a while, like the Mutilus Cernos, you get two elements with a single status mod. That's why I only have uh, one corrosive mod, or one toxin mod on here. It's because if you notice, I have the toxin, elemental, and corrosive. Because it counts the electricity as part of the base damage. Um, so it shares that quality with uh, the Mutilus Cernos, as much of a positive as that is. Radial attack is pure corrosive, so it's built to shred armor. Um, and most of our damage is actually going to be raw damage. But I did put 100 munitions on here to get a bit of scaling. So, but it's not going to help from the raw damage. It's mostly going to be uh, the arcane and aptitude and the faction mod. You guys know that. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's a pretty self-explanatory build. Uh, and obviously we're using the Panzer for equilibrium. The synth set. Uh, and recovery to maintain our health a little bit, but obviously as the levels get higher, this becomes more and more useless. Um, but this is going to give us a ton of energy, which is good because we need it. So let's take a look at the actual shield gating itself. We saw the damage. It's kind of whatever. So, I'm spamming one. Obviously, you can phase tank as long as you have energy. But the shield gate is intact with the one now. So, that's the minimum amount of... Or the minimum amount of drain. Um, using this build. To maintain your shield spamming one so it's based off of 35 energy but we had to get to 131 shield the extra drain with coaction drift boosting the aura gets us to like 135 so it's a little bit over but if you have prime sure footed this does allow you to keep prime sure footed if you don't care about arcane acceleration or you don't have the bane mod or the faction mod Energize clearly goes here. So it, it's up to you. Food for thought. Um, so let's talk about more theory. Okay. Uh, this build, the second one, the cheaper one, where Prime Sure Footed is optional, so it's not, you know, gated behind login wards. Um, the rest of the stuff is farmable. Um, Prime Flow, if you got some plats sitting around, Go to Warframe Market, pick one up, or if you have one from Barrow, obviously use it. Um, all of the benefits that this imbues, because the way the, the weapons seem to work is they work better with Gyre. Um, like the extra crit chance, right? 42 the base crit is 14 you get an additional what well, it's like i'm like at like 100 crit chance you get an, another 14 crit chance from using gyres 3 which brings us to what 56 this leads me to basically come to the conclusion that you shouldn't use Gyre's weapons. The alt fire is interesting, but in order to really synergize it with her kit, 
you have to run electricity to get the most out of it, but you're running into a wall because of how armor and electricity interact. Armor destroys electricity. You can make it work with a massive headshot bonus. But the problem is, is unless I'm... Actually, you know what? I can just Google it. I'm pretty sure... Alternax. This weapon does not get the benefit of headshots. Yeah, disadvantage. Primary fire has no bonus damage on headshots. So the main mechanic of double dipping on electricity procs, of getting a headshot, and then the AoE gets the headshot bonus of something standing next to it, doesn't help you here. So it's hard to justify unless you run uh, like a combo element and then boost with like a 90 mod electricity. So say you wanted to go like viral electric. I could see that working. Like if you don't have the Bane mod, you could run viral with electricity. I've some, had some luck with that. It's just with these weapons, even with getting like a crit chance damage multi-shot Riven, the damage is still kind of underwhelming. Even with like a max power strength gyre, the only, the, the redeeming things that allow these to work end up working even better on other weapons. Like the crit chances is phenomenal. But it works better on a Brahma or a Zar or an Archiplasmor or like a Nataruk. Like a Nataruk would say yes please to an extra 100% crit chance. At at that point once the crit the base crit chance get hot gets high enough, the bonus from this becomes more than an arcane avenger. Because the base crit chance on this, or the base crit chance on the Nataruk is so high, a 100% bonus crit chance scaled off of base crit chance, this will give you more crit chance on a perfect headshot of the Nataruk than running Arcane Avenger. So it's, this works. I've tried it in Steel Path. It's very energy hungry, but it allows you to shield gate properly. And it still just seems a little underwhelming. Like the big difference between this build and sort of the, the higher end build, if you will, uh, is you get to run double range. You get to run double range, which is kind of a big deal because the two doesn't scale off of duration where it drags all the enemies. So you could run like transient fortitude on like running like a Brahma build, like as your primary, as long as you can kill the enemies, your duration doesn't matter for three and two. Um, it's going to hurt you on your three, but if you're one shotting everything with your primary, cause it's a strong one, your three kind of doesn't matter either because they're dead already. And your two, you can't CC Eximus with their overguard up, which is when they're a problem. So I'm, I could see this being a great weapons platform if you just went full strength, literally just balls out full strength, like 300% strength gyre, ignored rotor swell, literally just helminthed it off. Or Helminthed off one and went like a like a roar build or like an eclipse build or something. To just boost the damage of an already strong primary through the roof. Because the base level enemies that aren't Eximus are not an issue because you have your coil horizon. 
With this build, you are practically immune to damage against non-Eximus enemies. Because there's so much range on your coil horizon, anything that isn't immune to crowd control just gets vacuumed in. And they're not an issue. And then you throw down a 1, and they're CC'd for an eternity. Or they're dead by the, your second shot of your primary, which they should be, since they're all grouped together. By the way, Coil Horizon is a fantastic helminth, if you haven't done it already. Um, Rotor Swell has some interesting interactions, but it's just in terms of, like, hyper late game scaling. I'm surprised there isn't better scaling in terms of, like, longer survival missions. More particularly Cascade. I'm surprised this doesn't scale better, because you can reach level cap in a Cascade mission in an hour. I'm surprised she doesn't survive doing the content that she was released with, if you actually want to enjoy the content to the fullest. Like, it's not like, um... Like, it, it's not like a, like a Volt, or like a Grendel, where the content that they got released along with was like an offshoot. Like, there was a quest, for sure. But Grendel didn't have, like, an open area or a quest line really with it. That it had, like, at least it should be able to do its own content well. But it's just the... With the combination of the three weapons... I mean, they work. They work. I, I rivened out of the main issues for this weapon... I ri like, and I had to roll like a minor god roll Riven. The, the negative is kind of annoying, but it doesn't affect the projectile arc. So it's not going to change anything. Um, but crit chance damage multi-shot, it boosts the damage a ton. Where I was doing like 10, 20k, I would hit like 200s. That's definitely late game viable. But I had to roll a Riven to make it functional. Um, Epitaph is whatever, but the Hespar was able to spam the heavy attack a little more. I didn't have to worry about having high status to compensate for the impact in the slash. Turns it into a slash weapon. But the multi-hit on it, and okay, I'm going to go on a small rant about this weapon. A heavy blade with a .4 follow-through. Like, I, I get that there needs to be follow-through on it. But at the same time, the ghoul saw shouldn't be clowning this. Because the ghoul saw has a 1.0 follow-through. And, and for those that don't know, I'll just show you real quick. Hold on. What the actual issue is with this? I need more enemies. The same way the same way shotguns have fall off melee has uh follow through. Now hopefully you guys can see it, but I'm gonna auto these guys. Did you see all the black numbers on the back? Can you see the black numbers? I'm not doing any damage because the fall off when I hit over here it's reducing from whatever the initial hit is and you can see it on the dots okay the dots see how it's 4k over here but then I come over here and this guy's bleeding for six it's the same hit it's the follow-through that's reduced my damage I don't know, I kind of figured, like, you can get damage out of this. Like, 50-60k, not tremendous, because it's a quick attack build. Like, I've gotten, when I've really min-maxed for the heavy attack, I think my highest so far is, like, 2.4 mil without priming. Obviously, viral from the Panzer. Um, so, say, like a, like, a 600k heavy. But that's with a ribbon to do it where it forces the multiple slash procs, almost. Um, so it's pretty pretty decent in this form, but the 
there aren't a ton of force procs on this. They're a decent number. It's not horrible. Um, especially since they put, um, they, they made the Ford Auto, the one where you're swinging in a 360 all the time, they made that a little better. So this, this works a little better. Um, but you shouldn't have to Riven out of the weapon in order, I mean, obviously you have to compensate for what's on the weapon, but you shouldn't need a Riven to fix it. Um, Gale Force... I, I'm not a fan of the stance. The Ford Auto is so cool. Even the first part of the heavy attack is cool. Um, the defense, or the, the block forward? Or was it the block? Hold on, which one is it? Yeah, this isn't bad. It's the same as the standard auto. What's the other one? This one. That one. Is kind of cool, but the the part where it sticks in the ground and you get the little AOE, you're gonna fucking die during that animation. Um, gyre is a super cool concept, but like this is the build to compensate for it. If you don't want to helmet something on, um, or run like a super sweaty build, um, you need to run Wellspring to be able to maintain your energy though. But this gets it done, but it's just, even with their weapons, I, I'm surprised they didn't make the, the first heavy scythe just like a phenomenal weapon. Like, first, f new stance, new weapon type, I'm surprised they just didn't kill it. So it's like to get people excited, like the, like, where the ghoul saw was supposed to be like this cool-ass weapon. Um, and it just has trouble doing its own content. I wasn't a fan. Like, it should like it should excel in what it does. But I've seen people force, like, through helmets and whatnot, and running, like, uh, like heavy iframe builds, like, with, like, protective dash and whatnot. Um, you shouldn't need armor strip from focus schools to get her abilities to do damage. Obviously, there's going to be some fall off, but her damage, obviously, as with everything else, if the enemies have no defenses, ta-da, you do damage. Everything is paper. Um, so there's definitely some synergy there. Like I've seen, and I and personally, I've tested it. Uh, like a gas electric build on the Alternox, if you can readily strip armor is actually pretty good. Um, but you lose something off the off the primary though. Like I didn't I didn't double up on a single stat except for maybe galvanized aptitude, the bonus damage. Um I mean what, the ambassador's better than this. And it has the same thing. Cause it has the awesome AoE. Um it's just, it's one of those things where, like, the Alternox is a victim of the times. You can make it work. I have six Forma and a really good Riven. Not a god god roll, but, like, a really strong Riven. And I know it couldn't level cap, and that's fine. The weapon doesn't have to. But, like, this is what you're going to need to do Steel Path. But... All right, I don't know where else to talk about with this, but um, obviously for the Prime mods, if you don't have the Prime version, use the Unprimed, like the regular Smite Grenier, Quickening, instead of Prime Fury, regular Reach. Um, and to be honest, if you got through the Zeremin and you don't have any of those at all, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, Alternox, basic build, just... Make sure to use, like, a Malignant Force. You could also swap out for um, Infected Clip and just rely on the status chance from Galvanized Aptitude. Um, also viable, get a little bit more base damage. Um, let's see, something like this. Right. Bit more base damage, less status chance, but the, the raw damage would go up. It would help with the, the alpha. Uh, wouldn't do shit for Hunter Munitions, though. Your slash procs. But it helped with the alpha. 
um, standard epitaph uh, primer uh, mod how you want. If you don't want to run the Panzer uh, mod for viral, uh, maybe even do like a viral electric to help with Gyre's passive. That would be pretty solid. Um, I'm pretty set on using the Panzer right now, unless I'm doing like a proper farm build. Um, then I would swap out if I was using like a Smita. Um, then again, if you were doing a farm build, you probably wouldn't be using Gyre. But anyway, there's my hot take on it. Not a whole lot of math this time on a build breakdown. Uh, I'll show you this one, the way more energy hungry build. Um, but it gives you the additional range if you value it. If you're fine with 130, but you still want to maintain your shield gate on her one, this is another alternative prime sure-footed. Um, if you don't have it, is is free real estate. Take that out, slot that there. You can get your double range back. Uh, maybe do natural talent. It's always a positive in this situation because you're spamming when you're being when you're face tanking. Um, you could do double range. Uh, maybe even prime continuity if you want your three or your uh, your rotor swell your four to stay up. Um, Cathode Grace is only ever really an issue at the very, very start trying to keep it up. But it, it's up to you. Uh, but this get, at least gives you some flexibility. Both of these maintain the shield gate on the one, which is what we were trying to do. Um, but it's just, this is an incredibly frustrating frame because it's, again, the same thing with Korra. With the Kang Dragon Key... Maybe this is how they're building stuff nowadays. But it's hard to shield gate properly for this amount. And even with my tankiest frame, you absolutely cannot armor tank to, to as much as the enemy scale. Eventually you run out of tank and you just start getting one shot. Um, so you have to use shield gating. And besides... She has 100 base armor, so it's, it's low to begin with, but here you go. That's the build. I hope this helps y'all. Have a blessed day.